Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joshua T. Whaley, and I am the best-selling author of Lost Cannibal Manifesto, amongst many other books. But first, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers for showing me love. We're less than 20 away from that 1500 mark. Not too bad for just over a month of filming these. Anyway, I'm back out here in the Temple of Creation in my favorite enchanted forest known as Tryon Creek, about a mile from my house. Now with that said, if you like videos that are just the author reading his own words and not AI generated voices or imagery, then you've come to the right place. So now let's go ahead and get started with today's topic, Christ Consciousness. In the Gospel of Thomas, verse 3, Yeshua says, If your leaders say, Look, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is within you, and it is outside you. When you know yourselves, then you will be known, and you will understand that you are the children of the living Father. I have used this verse previously because of its vital importance in the understanding of the nature of who we truly are, just as, as above, so below, can be interpreted as the same teaching. However, I have not covered that a version of this teaching is also found in the Cantonized Gospels as well. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, the teaching is echoed. Now, when he, meaning Yeshua, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Or basically, the kingdom in heaven is above, and the kingdom within you is below. With these two verses, one from Gnostic Christianity and one from Orthodox Christianity, we learn that the kingdom, or heaven, is not some far-off place in the clouds, but lives inside all of us. Now this will be our jumping-off point where we can now discuss the term Christ Consciousness. As an abstract definition, Christ Consciousness is an enlightened awareness of the unity consciousness that binds us all together, which is also sometimes referred to as God Consciousness. At this highest level of consciousness, our thoughts exist beyond the material world and into the realm of pure energy. It is in this higher state of mind that we find all of the good energy, such as compassion, acceptance, forgiveness, and love, or basically everything that Yeshua taught us about and not that which Yahweh commanded us to do in the Old Testament. Anyway, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, the power of the mind and Christ's consciousness is alluded to. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This concept is also touched on in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, meaning the matrix we are sold as our reality. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. However, this concept of Christ consciousness transcends religious boundaries, as it is a universal state of divine awareness, and even though it is named after Yeshua. But speaking of Yeshua, some who follow this practice believe that Yeshua was not just one historical individual, but a composite of teachings from multiple enlightened beings, who each embodied this state of elevated consciousness, guiding humanity towards an elevated level of spiritual awakening. I, for one, who is not only a Christian, but a Gnostic Christian at that, well, kind of with a side of Buddhist philosophy, do not subscribe to this belief. No, I believe in the divinity of Yeshua, and that he was who he claimed to be. However, Unlike what more devout or evangelical people seem to do, even though they say they don't, I do not judge you on your personal beliefs, because anything that helps you reach this positive state of higher consciousness is a good thing. Plus, didn't Yeshua teach us in John about casting the first stone, meaning don't judge others for their actions if these actions are not causing harm to another? With that said, when we begin our path towards Christ consciousness through our own personal spiritual awakening, we will discover many new attributes that we were unaware that we had before our journey began. First, we will discover our own sovereignty. 
which is our sacred connection with the divine consciousness that allows us to shape our lives and the world around us. This happens through our actions, our choices, and our thoughts. This is achieved through another group of philosophical concepts known as Hermeticism, which is another school of thought that I subscribe to. Anyway, this transcension is part of the principle of mentalism. Next, we will discover our own discernment, which is our ability to perceive the deeper truths of life that are hidden just beneath the surface of our reality. When we learn how to understand the power of our own discernment, we also learn how to navigate the trials of our lives with a greater sense of clarity. This will allow our actions, thoughts, and choices to align with our higher good, our self if you prefer. When we learn how to use our power of discernment wisely, we hone the skills of positive thinking, always focusing on what uplifts our spirits instead of what drains them. Because of this, discernment also allows us to recognize the influences which shape our thoughts and emotions, in turn shaping our reality allowing us to tackle our journey through this life with a greater understanding of who we truly are. This wisdom of our own humanity is the key to a life ruled by compassion. In the Gnostic tradition, we learn of a higher being known as Sophia, sometimes referred to as Barbello and some Gnostic cosmogony, such as the Secret Book of John, also known as the Apocryphon of John who arose out of the mind of the Father, or the All. She is sometimes considered the twin of Yeshua, or the consort of Infinite Spirit, or even the Holy Spirit of the Trinity. In the Kabbalistic tradition, Sophia is the female expression of God. I understand this may seem surprising to anyone who believes what they learned in Sunday school, but the roots of Christianity are far deeper than you can ever imagine. And, just like Sophia in non-Kabbalistic Jewish tradition, Yahweh, indeed, had a wife, known as Ashara, and she was worshipped alongside of Yahweh. Ashara is found in the Torah. However, she was, like Sophia, heavily edited out of the Old Testament by the same men who found most of Yeshua's teachings of consciousness to be heresy. But that's a subject for another day. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Sophia is the personification of divine wisdom in the Gnostic tradition. Christ consciousness is considered the masculine expression of Sophia and is the active quest for this divine wisdom. So what does this all mean? Well, Christ consciousness is the flame of divine love and wisdom that burns inside all of us. Once we discover we have this divine spark inside us, we can allow it to permeate every aspect of our lives, affecting our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions, and all our relationships, deepening our bonds. And these deeper bonds or connections are not just limited to those around us, but to our own true spiritual selves. When we recognize our sovereignty in our power of discernment, we can take a more active role in shaping the world around us, steering our lives in a more positive direction. It is your discernment which allows you to reach a higher level of truth. As you grow and learn to embrace your power of Christ consciousness, your presence will begin to inspire those around you, possibly allowing them to awaken to their own divine potential. And more important, this could lead to a ripple effect, contributing to the further evolution of human consciousness and spiritual awakening. So in conclusion, fostering an environment of love, compassion, and wisdom will allow yourself and others around you to reach their highest potential. Or in the words of Yeshua that began this video, when you know yourself, then you will be known, and you will understand that you are the children of the living father, well, and mother, Sophia. Anyway, that wraps up Christ consciousness. So now the housekeeping that I have to do, if you stuck around to the end, thank you. 
And if you like what I am attempting to do here, please like and subscribe. My mission and the mission of this channel is to offer hope and enlightenment to a world that may seem so cold and dark sometimes. In the description box, you will find links to my books. Yes, they are considered horror, but Lost Cannibal Manifesto and the Inferno Effect have much deeper meanings below the surface. So if you have time, please check them out. I am also working on a new book of epic proportions that I hope to finish this winter, which will cover a lot of forbidden history, hermeticism, and Gnostic Christianity. It's probably going to be over 700 pages, so give me time to work on it. it. Also included will be the lost life and teachings of Yeshua that the church has kept secret for close to 2,000 years. I can tell you this much. When you see what Yeshua really taught us about who we truly are in the nature of the universe, you will be shocked and surprised because it is far different than what you have been told. Anyway, I'll talk to you again soon. I love you all. Bye.